All right. <clears throat> All right, good evening. Welcome everybody to the Berwick Planning Board meeting. This is uh, Thursday, October 1st, 2020. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, invisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so the planning board members we have present tonight in Town Hall, we have alternate member David Ross Lyons. On the uh, Zoom call here, we have Frank Underwood, he's a regular member. We also have Michael LaRue, he's a regular member. And then welcome aboard, Jerry Graybill, our new alternate. Jerry, thank you so much for uh, joining the planning board. My pleasure. And you'll be voting tonight, so you'll be a voting member. We also have our code enforcement officer, Jennifer McCabe, and our town planner, James Bellissimo here. What's that? Yep. Am I filling for Nicole and he's for Steve? Yes. So you're, okay. yes. Sean, I mean. Yeah, you're, you're fine. Next on the agenda is the public comment session. It's open to any resident or property owner in the town of Berwick to come forward and talk about anything that relates to the planning board. Public comment session is open. Feel free to come forward. Do we have anybody in the um, waiting room? Nope. No emails either. Okay. Seeing nobody come forward, we'll close the public comment session. Moving on to the approval of minutes for the September 17th, 2020 meeting. Do you have the, the uh, volume up on that? Frank, do you have anything? Yeah, the only comment I had, and it might not really need to be addressed, um, is that I noticed, I know that 3G Realty is rethinking their whole application. Am I correct, James? Yes. Um, the applicant is going to be modifying getting, his plans. Yeah, getting that license. My only comment was if you remember, I was trying to make sure when we advertise a hearing or we identify a use that we are specific to how it is identified in the land use table. And I had brought up that they called for two of the buildings to be general industrial buildings, which I don't think we have a use. I mean, you need to have a specific use in those buildings if they are going to be industrial. But I think it's a mute point. We'll just wait and see what they come back, come back with. But that was my only comment on the minutes. Other than that, it will fine. Mike, do you have anything? No, I'm good. Okay, I know Jerry, you aren't here for that meeting. So if you'd like to abstain, by all means, you're welcome to do that. David, do you have anything? I actually was not at that meeting, so I okay. am abstaining. So actually, we have three members that were present at that meeting, so we could vote on this. So we're looking for a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make the motion that we approve the minutes to the uh, September 17th planning board meeting as presented. I'll second. Seconded by Michael LaRue. Okay, roll call vote. Frank? Uh, yes. Michael? Yes. Jerry? I'll abstain. David? Abstain. Okay, that's, so that's three uh, in favor and two have abstained. Next on the agenda is a sketch plan, major subdivision, Norman Court and Hapliker Lane. It's the, in the R2 zone and the applicant is LRB leasing. I'll turn it over to our town planner, James. Sure, this is a project that's been in the works for several years now. Uh, it's been at sketch plan, I believe this is the third time it's back um, under new ownership and uh, new engineering. It's um, mostly in the R2 zone for a total of uh, 50 lots plus or minus. Uh, the project is in the MS4 urbanized area, which uh, this is stormwater. Um, so that's, um, I think I defer to the applicants to fill in some of the other more technical details and kind of get into the meat of it. Okay, Les? Hi, Les Wadwell. Um, so as James highlighted, this was a project that uh, started coming before the planning board a few years ago. and. Um, <clears throat> I ended up taking the project over, and as I know, most of you guys know me. We're uh, we're gonna we're gonna get this through the planning board, uh, do all take all the right steps, and get all the right stuff done. We've uh, 
we've hired several consultants. We've had great luck with them in the past. They uh, seem to really, really have a grip on things. And this is uh, basically, it. Uh, there's two roads there now. One is uh, Norman Court and one is Halflinger. Um, Norman Court has a house here, a house, a business, and then three houses. Halflinger has, I think, four houses on it. Halflinger was a, I think, an approved subdivision at one point, and they never finished the subdivision. So, um, you know, combining these two properties allows us, uh, from the sketch plan, looks like about 54 lots back there. Um, yeah. And I think it'll be a beautiful area. It's gonna be close to the downtown, walking distance to the new downtown. And I think it'll uh, provide some good housing, some nice homes for people. You've done a very good job. Okay. <laughs> Essentially what we've done is, you know, sketch plan indicating what were two properties that have from the lane, have from the end also the upper portion here, uh, Norman Court, basically have laid out lots that were serviced by municipal sewer, municipal water. We did have originally, back in I think 2008, we had a 20 lot subdivision that came in on the Hatton property, Richard Damaris's property, that was cut back to a four lot subdivision at some point. Uh, Can you just turn your microphone towards you as you're talking? Oh, yeah. um, that was turned into a four lot subdivision. We added a cul-de-sac here as a dead end. Mm -hmm. Originally we had 20 lots coming back to here on a dead end street. That was the limit of the number of lots you could have. One of the things that this subdivision required was a great deal of capital infrastructure. We were putting sewer and water in there at that time. It had a significant pump station that had to go here. Okay, it had to be one of the first things you put in. 2008, things went south and the project, like I said, got pulled back to four lots. It's been sitting there since. These fellows have come in, taken a look at this section and this section, turned it back over to new owners. And what we're proposing now is to come in and create loops. We'll be doing this in a number of phases. Probably the first phase down here will be with the pump station in this area. Collect gravity sewer to here, pump it back out, finish this out, get up to our 20 lots that we can have on a one-way street, come in, do another phase here, then connect things. So you'll see this come through in phases. We have done all the wetlands mapping, high intensity mapping. This did have stormwater approval from DEP back in 2000, I believe eight, shortly after the stormwater law came into effect. That will need to be redone. It also will have a site location permit because we're beyond the limit of number of lots without going in for site location. So that's approximately a six month process at DEP. Okay, from the time we submit it until it comes back out as an approval, they're taking almost all of the statutory time to get things done. We typically would about come through preliminary approval at the town, have all the details worked out, then it would be submitted to the state for approval. Uh, we feel that this probably will take eight to nine months for approval. It depends, of course, on the planning board. It depends on the DEP on their time frame, and hopefully, we'll be doing some construction early next summer. Okay, David. Um, I just have one question. Are you, uh, based off the application you've submitted so far, this application is indicating it's private wells and sewers? Uh, that we had. We had a mess up when it came out of the office. Somebody grabbed his own application. Okay. okay. I just found it this afternoon. I'll send these out. I'll send these out electronically so people will get to see them that aren't here tonight. This has the correct information. Great. On it. Yeah. Thank you. Good catch. Thank you. That's my only question so far. All right, Michael. Um, 
the only question I have is sidewalks. Um, any thought of them? It was going to be my question too. You beat me to it. On Fifty spots. It's it's going to be a lot of walking distance. <laughs> uh, I am a believer in sidewalks. The subdivision that comes in here, Hatchlinger Lane, is approved with sidewalks. Yeah. So that road has not been completed. As a matter of fact, I think the town holds some bond money for its completion. Part of the completion of that would be sidewalks. I would assume what we would like to do is we would have a loop of sidewalks, perhaps on the short cul-de-sacs. We would not be bringing sidewalks into those as that's very quiet traffic-wise. And rather than add a bunch of more pavement to something and maintenance issues, both for homeowners and for the town, we might we, we might ask that we could get sidewalks here, perhaps here. The streets that are through streets would have a sidewalk. We would prefer to have them on one side. We don't think it's necessary to have two. All right. Anything else, Mike? No, that's all I have so far. Frank? Uh, yeah, just a couple things. Um, I looked at the application and I noticed that you marked it major subdivision sketch. So I'm assuming the reason some of those paragraphs weren't filled out is because we're just in that in that sketch phase. I mean, Dave picked up on the on the utilities being municipal and not private, but there are other things in there, fire protection and those kinds of things that I'm assuming when the final application comes in for completeness, uh, that whole form will be realigned and refigured and represented. Um, That's correct. Inadvertently, Frank, part of that came in, it got stuck into the application without being caught. I did, that's what I just handed out here. I'll send it out when I get back into the office. I'll send it out electronically. It yeah. goes through most of those showing, you know, exactly what's going to be built for public infrastructure, hydrants, that type of thing. We filled that section out. Typically, I don't think of filling that out until we do get to the preliminary plan, but I have one here with me tonight and I'll pass it. I'll get it electronically out to the rest of you. Because I know paragraph 17 says, was this part of another subdivision? And of course, it's not filled out. It, I, I think it even said no, but the point is it, it was because you've modified the Haplinger Lane project. Have, yeah. The oh. modified yeah. The modified application says that. Just a, just a couple things. I'm big on sewer, and I had an opportunity to chat with Tom a little bit, but if we can eliminate the two, because each project, if I remember right, Norman Court and Haplinger each would have had their own little pumping station on it. I'm mm -hmm. assuming we're going to boil this down with gravity system so that we end up with only one. What we've done now is we've laid it out so that we can get sewer from the Norman Cod area. Everything does flow to the south and we would be putting a pump station in this area. I don't know if you can see my finger. I can see it. Couple yep. upland areas there where the pump station would go. That's about on the low spot of the property. So we can bring everything in there then we simply would have a force main over here to this cul-de-sac to yep. try to gravity sewer. Uh, you and I discussed briefly possibility of gravity sewer out to Route 9. Correct. I, I have taken a look at it, okay, on what I have for information online, Google Earth, that type of topography. Uh, grades that will do it. There's a tremendous amount of wetlands between here and Route 9. And then there are properties that we'd have to gain easements for to get a gravity sewer in. Mm -hmm. You know, I do, I agree with you. We would be better if we could have gravity sewer out to your gravity sewer in Route 9. I'm not sure if it's feasible. My initial reaction was that it was not. Yeah, the other thing you can always do too is when you lay out your, <coughs> the, the one station you're going to end up with, you could always have the option in the future that if something happens downstream from you in that land between, that you can eliminate that pumping station through one of their endeavors if they so choose to do something. Because we've, we've done that in other municipalities, eliminated pumping stations with future gravity interceptors kinds of things. So, but I'm glad you're looking at that. Um, second question was, I know you guys will do a great job doing the net residential calculation. I was glad to hear that we had high intensity soils on both the Norman Court project and on Haplinger, so it should be pretty easy for you to run the numbers and make sure we can get the 50 or 54 units in there based on your net residential calculation. 
The third thing I had was I'm just concerned about, um, I'm assuming that you're going overhead with your electrical. Am I correct on that? That decision has not been made at this time. The only thing I would like you to do is there probably, if we're going to have sidewalks and we're going to have intersections, I know you may have street lighting that would be put in as part of making sure intersections are, 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 are lit. Just coordinate with the town on that endeavor because my understanding is the town is going through the process under contract to change out all the light heads, light fixtures throughout the town. So just make sure if we end up with overhead light fixtures in there that they're consistent with what the town is putting in for LED uh, standards. Um, other than that, that's the only questions I have at this point. Okay, um, picking up on the overhead or the underground, is it going to be underground? Or is that is that the, you know, the kind of the way that you're leaning? Oh, if you could just come to the mic, Les. <clears throat> My inclination would always be to do underground wherever possible. Uh, I, you know, I haven't really looked at the engineering here and there may be areas that that's not feasible. I don't know that's Tom's side of it, but you know, if, if, if I were to go one way, I would say underground. I mean, you've driven through like Dobson and um, Ireland, right? You've seen that it's all underground. You know, one of my first jobs uh, as a teenager, I worked for an underground utility company. And uh, so I put miles and miles and miles of underground utilities in. I can't envision putting a pole in. Yeah. But again, I, I don't know. You know so, so basically you're saying it depends on the engineering. In, in, in my opinion, the only way that I would do any overhead is if there was for some reason we couldn't do underground. And I don't know what that could be, you know. What are you thinking for like street lighting? Um. That would, that would basically, typically what you're going to do is you're going to team up with the town. So it matches what the town is doing. Yeah, and again, that, you know, that's all stuff that, you know, uh, that's really Tom's, Tom's side of this. I mean, uh, he tells me what to build and I build it. But you're not thinking of like big overhead lights, like the big halogen or even the LEDs you now. Know, we really haven't. Lamp put, posts? We haven't put any time into that okay. really. Okay, gotcha. So typically what we would do is we come back to the town and the planning board and say, you know, what would you prefer here? Gotcha. Okay. I have a model pole that is like the great value brand of the street lights across from the bridge. They're like, a, they're significantly less expensive, but they match that style. And then are you going to have, is this going to be an HOA? I'm sorry. Homeowners Association? I don't believe so. It typically will be a homeowners association because we're going to have some stormwater facilities in there. Okay. They're going to need to be maintained. An open space. There will be some maintenance stuff that's going to have to be taken care of. And the open space, too. The open space, yeah. Are you going to ask the town to take over these roads? Yes. Okay. Yeah, unless you've dealt with this before about sidewalks. You know, up in R2, off a of cemetery. <laughs> off, up, you know, off, off a of cemetery, obviously, you know, that was like, we don't really need sidewalks there, but for this one, definitely. Yeah, and I know, and I agree 100%. And I yeah. know that, uh, I think when I talked to James, he said that you guys were uh, finalizing your sidewalk plan, which is going up Old Pine Hill Road. Correct. So I, and you know, even like on my last project, I said, I don't have a problem putting sidewalks in if that's where you tell me the plan is going to be. Yep. I just, you know, like you said, on Cemetery Road, it didn't make sense to put them in. No. And then on, on Old Pine Hill Road on my project, you know, I don't, I can't imagine you were going to put sidewalks in on that side of the street. So that was the only, uh, my only hesitation. It's not, you know, the scale of this project and the amount of money that we're going to put into this infrastructure, sidewalks is not going to make, is not going to sway the scale one way or another on this. So certainly, you know. Yep. There's only one thing that I know I walk half linger, half linger a lot. Um, there's no sidewalks on that. So it's going to be kind of a weird thing that you're going to have sidewalks over 96% of the. Do, do you hear, I, I don't yeah. know if you heard me. That subdivision approved with sidewalks. That the road town actually been, has that road money. has not been completed. There's an escrow account here with the town to complete the road. Oh. That one had a sidewalk put in. Excellent. Did you know that? Yep. Well, I know we have an escrow of like $28,000 we've had for since 2008. So would the town be on the hook for building those sidewalks? Well, that, that would come out. 
That's what your your the escrow is for. With the escrow yeah. account, the escrow account came from the developer, so that escrow money would be used, okay, to build those sidewalks. Build those sidewalks yeah. yeah, that's something that we need to keep in mind, James, because that would be the perfect. That's what we want there. I mean, yeah. However, way it shakes out, well, we can you we can coordinate that. However, the money is utilized to make it so it's built to the plan. And anything above and beyond is on less. You know what I mean? So if it's more than twenty thousand to build, I would say. And then the only thing I think that the only other question I have is we have fifty four lots in here, and let's assume that there's two cars per day. That's over a hundred cars that are going to be on that road. That's already a very dangerous road. There's already a lot of congestion once you get down to School Street trying to make a left or right, we're really gonna have to look at a plan for Old Pine Hill Road. And I think some of the abutting neighborhoods as far that are being used as cut-throughs even now, prior to this development going in. I mean, because we both live in an adjoining neighborhood and we're having major issues with cars flying down the road and people using that as a cut-through from School Street to Old Pine Hill Road North, which, isn't even really saving people it time, isn't. but they're flying down the road. We got a lot of kids, but I'm, I'm just thinking of even getting onto Old Pine Hill and then getting onto School Street. I mean, we have to really look long. And I'm not, I'm not asking for a traffic study, but I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, I, so I, you know, I own property on Old Pine Hill Road, and I also own property on Old Pine Hill Road South. Yep. And I'm amazed. At, you know, I plow all of my properties and I'm amazed at how many people cut through Old Pine Hill Road South and how fast they travel. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I, I don't, I don't know what the answer is. Uh, I, I'm confident that even in a snowstorm, these guys are doing well in excess of the speed limit. So I don't know if that's something to talk to the, you know, police department about and try and get that curbed. I mean, I don't, I don't know what I could do and I tell you what, Old Pine Hill Road uh, North is in bad shape. Something's with my, just as bad. <laughs> with my truck, I mean, I'm doing 15 miles an hour down that road. It's not in great shape, and people are still flying down that. So I don't know what this, but we, that's something that we definitely have to look at. Um, I don't know if it's an enforcement issue. It could be. Um, maybe it's something we'll talk to Steve about. Yeah, and, he's and the, the road chief. agent, right? What's that? Is he the road agent? Yes. Okay. Yeah, my my one trick pony with these things is is just street calming measures. So sidewalks would help narrowing the road, but it could be a combination of enforcement and seeing what else we can do for mm -hmm. to slow those cars down. Okay, and, I, and you know that intersection of Old Pine Hill Road and Route Nine is a tough one. Not even congestion wise, it's just a tough one because cars on Route Nine are flying and they, yeah. you know, they they come flying down that you got to like look both ways I and mean, i'm on that road all the time yep and then you got to look both ways and be ready to really gun it mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's, it's a tough one go. <laughs> well i don't have anything else um just just one more comment dave i did less are you building typical houses or are you building to with the buyer's specification of the buyer's the buyer's needs meaning are they two bedroom three bedroom Kind of units. I, th I think at this point, you know, our intent is to uh, is to build to to uh, buyers, you know, to suit the buyer. Okay. So you know, we, we will want to try to maintain some uh, consistency through the development, so that you know, one guy's not building a you know five thousand square foot mansion, and one guy's building a six hundred square foot ranch. You know, we're gonna try to build a consistent uh, subdivision, but. Whether it's you know three bedrooms or four bedrooms or two bedrooms, um, that's going to be up to what the buyer, uh, mm -hmm. buyer wants. And I think the only reason I'm asking that is I think at some point we're going to need some kind of a an, an evaluation or a feel or impact for number of students and those kinds of things that might be in the school system. And bedrooms usually are an indicator of that. So. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure that that I can give you that information. I, I think what we would do is just look at the 50 units, whatever, assume two bedrooms per unit, maybe a, a child and a half, whatever the school district says the statistics are. Because I think we're gonna just have to answer that question. It's not a big thing, I just think we're gonna have to answer it. 
Sure. And, and, you know, those, those types of issues are another reason why uh, uh, Tom mentioned that, you know, building this project in phases and the reason that, you know, a couple of the reasons to build it in phases are, uh, is what's the absorption rate in the town of Berwick for new houses? You know, can we go in a year and build 54 new houses? Probably not. I mean, the way the market is right now, inventory is at a, a 30 day uh, inventory. So, you know, nothing, the average is 30 days on the market. That's incredibly low. I think there's six houses for sale in Berwick. So the demand is high, but is it 54 houses high in a year? And, you know, 2020 has been crazy. Who knows? What we the also got to look at this 2008 going to happen again. So we are, we are currently uh, trying to get as much data as we can uh, be, to determine what, you know, they think that the absorption rate is right now and going forward. And that will greatly determine how we phase this project, you know, try to phase it in a manner that every year, if the absorption rate is 20 new houses a year or 30 new houses a year, then, you know, maybe we do it in three phases and we build, you know, 20, 20 and 14. Or... I think one of the news things recently was the number of millennials that are moving back to Maine. So maybe you can capture some of them. Okay. <laughs> Cause we need a workforce. <laughs> you know, as far as my rentals go, you know, the, the challenge with the millennials is, you know, my, my rentals, um, we, uh, we never missed a month's rent and out of 46 units and, uh, it's all millennials and they don't want to buy. That's the challenge. You know, they'd, they'd rather the rent. And, you know, you look at some of the rents around here, like Dover, you know, the, the Orpheum, the Orpheum they mm -hmm. built, you know, they get uh, 1850 for a studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And someone would rather pay 1850 for a studio than 1400 for a $250,000 house. Mortgage, right. <laughs> They'll figure it out. I, I'm convinced. <laughs> They're buying a house. They're just buying it for somebody else. Yep. Jerry, do you have anything else? I have nothing at this time. Michael? Okay, no, David? I, um, I did get a text message from our vice chair, Nicole. She said that there was a traffic study that was conducted when you built the apartment building. So if that should be on file. If we could just maybe take a look at that and just send it out to people. Yep. So I'm not sure if, I don't know if Frank was on the board at that time. I don't think he was. Right. And I know I Jerry enough. definitely wasn't. I wasn't. And you weren't either, yep. yeah. Yep. So if we could just get that and just take a look at that. Um, all right, how do we move ahead? It's, we're now at scheduling another site walk. Yeah. I mean, we've taken two site walks already on Norman Court, but I'm kind of interested to see Halflinger and where you're gonna do that cutback. Um, behind that property there to extend, you know, the road. So um, I'd say the sooner, the sooner the better. I mean, I'll probably stay for two weeks because you don't know if we're getting snow in November and how cold it's going to get. And then you all, we're also thinking of, you know, sunset. Um, we're going to do another Saturday like we did last time. We can. Yeah, actually, you know, because daylight savings time is coming up here in a couple of weeks. So we're going to start getting dark at like 530. Um, oh. But we're still going to need to have them submit the full application. This is just a sketch level, correct? I think it's, I, yeah. Well, no, I think we could do a site walk without. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I'm not saying that, that that's fine. I have no problem with the site walk because I think they've done enough in the sketch level to, to detail out what they're doing. But obviously, we're going to have to get the com application complete and some of those things. So, yeah, we're not acting on anything tonight. Yeah. I, I, I understand that. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, what do you guys think about doing a uh, Saturday like David suggested? Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Like maybe the 10th, October 10th. Yeah. And you know, I've been avoiding site walks. I'm older. <laughs> it's not that I physically can't do it. It's just I'm older. <laughs> it's nine o'clock. How about this like 930 work? That's fine. Yeah. For me. Mike, does that work? Yeah. Jerry? Yep, that's fine with me. James? You don't need to come. <laughs> I think does that I, work for you guys? Earlier would be better. I a little bit of time to get a survey crew out there just to find the set lines on the streets. But, you know, two weeks would work that up to me. Getting the crew out there next week, maybe talk. They're going to screen that. Do it on the 17th. Does that work? The 17th would be better for you? That's Columbus Day weekend. But no, what, but what I need to do is I need to fly the streets and stuff. You got to figure out where you are. 
Oh, yeah. Are we going to trek through the woods or are we just going to look at what's there? I'd say so. I mean, to an extent. I'd, I'd say to an extent. So the 17th works better? It works for me in that I can get some packing done. Yeah, and that would be super helpful. My only concern is that's a holiday weekend. That's Columbus Day weekend. Do you plan on that? Are you, are you doing morning? it on that Thursday or are you doing it on that Saturday? That's the question. Saturday. Um, or if it's early enough, it should be fine. Yeah. So can we do 9.30 on, on the 17th? I'm fine with that. Can we do 8.30? I'm fine either way. I mean, I'm, I'll be up. 9.30 is better. 9.30, okay. 9.30, <laughs> Mike? Yep, that's good. Jerry? Yes, that's fine. Okay, so that gives you plenty of time. And yeah, you know, let us know like when you do have the flags in, because I might even just walk out there and take a look around and not to me trespassing or anything like that, but. Um, trespassing unless you have criminal intent. The only one thing I had for a comment <clears throat> is just, I just, like, and I hope you guys, are like think creatively about the like connectivity because there's quite a big a, a distance to be able to to connect if you're walking it's a pretty big loop so i don't know if kind of by the brook would be an ideal spot i understand you want to mess with wetlands but thinking about walking trails in there and then how to purposefully use that open space what it could be used for you know how to access it and you know a, a place that people can use mm. And then I guess we have to decide where we're going to meet. Do we want to meet at the end of the pavement on Norman Court? We could just meet there, and then we could drive over to Halflinger to the. How about the cul de sac? Halflinger could just change to park around there. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, that's what I was just thinking. The beginning of Norman Court is not really a good spot to park. No, I'm saying at the end of Norman Court. But fine, if you want to meet at the cul de sac. Okay, we'll meet there. Yeah. Nine thirty sounds good. All right. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda is the public comment. Do we have anybody in the waiting room? Nope. Les, would you like to speak for public comment? Seeing nobody come forward, we'll close the public comment session, opening it up to informational items from staff and from the board. So James. Um, I talked with uh, Great Falls Construction today a couple times. They are wrapping up. Um, they're gonna have a site plan. Um, they're, they're putting some final touches on their site plan. I don't know if they're going to have it Thank ready you. to be shared for this next update meeting in October, but certainly December. And they're going to, in October, they're going to unveil some of the big details on um, units of apartments and the amount of square footage of commercial space they're going to add. So that's October 14th, I believe. And then there's another meeting December 15th. I believe December 15th, they will- What time is that meeting on the 14th? On the 14th, it's 6 p.m. It's on, um, it's on the um, Great Falls Construction's Facebook page. And then the meeting in December will be in the morning. And that meeting in the morning, they are sharing their site plan. Um, and then if it's received well, they're gonna be ready to go to planning board and then hoping for construction in late spring, early summer. Really? Wow, yeah. exciting. And you can see they've been working on their duplex 27. It looks fantastic. That's the work they do. And you see they have, sometimes they have like six cars, six trucks and cars and working on it. So mm -hmm. turn that right around. Yep. Anybody else have anything? I just want to thank Jerry for stepping up. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, Jerry, you know what? We've been impressed with your knowledge of the land use ordinance, you and your wife and the comp plan and We've been trying to get people on the board for a while, and I'm, I'm glad that we talked you into it. So thank you very much. Thank you, too. And uh, my wife and I will be joining James next Thursday, I think, for the uh, comprehensive plan review. That's right. Yep. Bring lots of coffee. <laughs> David, anything? I'm good. All right. Thank you. Um, Mike, anything? Nope. Okay, next on the agenda is the adjournment. So traditionally, the <laughs> alternate member um, or alternate members will make, you can make a motion when you're an alternate, you just can't vote on it. But traditionally, somehow it's happened. The alternate makes the motion to adjourn. So seeing as it's Jerry's, we'll yield the floor to him. 
I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. And seconded by David. And all in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Have a good night, guys. See ya.